welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. Look, as we close out 2022, I think a lot of people out there would probably just um, say good riddance. I think uh, the market's probably going to end the year down about 20%. Um, the stock market typically does not have back-to-back -back, uh, down years. So uh, for you guys that have been holding true in the pocket in 2022, which is the right move, and just um, uh, dollar averaging these markets, that's the prudent thing to do. So I commend you for those efforts. Um, we've just here recently um, coming into the year's end, um, incurred um, another all-time low, and I think it generated some churn in the Discord group, which is the premier drop point for information on all things highly on, I think, the uh, sense and the mood and the tone and tenor in the Discord group was... Um, was really was really negative and rightfully so. I, I think um, you know shareholder sentiment is probably as low as it's ever been uh, in the in the company, and I, I think that's really uh, just a sign of where we are in the company. I think it's a sign of where we've been. I, I think it um, can exacerbate itself when opinions are compounded on top of each other, and I think. Um, when we do that, um, the actual uh, areas of, um, of of important focus are lost. And I think to offer this product here is a testament to my conviction on the company. My conviction on the company has not wavered. Um, my questions with regard to uh, OEM integration and the potential for bottlenecking at the end of 2023 are are um, they're out there, um, and they have are are and will go on unanswered. Um, I, I'm acceptive of that. Um, I, I I don't need reaffirmation of. Um, you know, um, a, a constructive piece of dialogue that I look to enter into with highly on holdings. I've never got a response through Twitter, and I don't believe that I ever would. Um, and the question is, do I deserve it? Right. Um, I don't do things for uh, for for validation. I don't do things to receive some sort of. Uh, acknowledgement or or reciprocation of the message. I just do it because I feel like it's the right thing to do, and I have felt compelled to offer this product. And I offer it with um, some consistency. I've done it with some consistency throughout the entire year here in 2022. And there's a few commonalities uh, throughout the offering of the message here that I would like to bring to your attention with regard to how I look at the highly on opportunity and how I will package up 2022 and put it in the rear view mirror and look to 2023 with the same anticipation that I entered into 2022 with, um, the same expectations for highly on to execute uh, along their path to commercialization do I think that Hylion will get to their eventual goal of commercialization? I sure hope so. I think when you look at this and strip away all the drama and you strip away all of the opinions and you strip away all the Twitter uh, posts and you strip away all the Yahoo feeds, Hylion in its core is a great idea. It's a great idea. It's a great idea insofar as the company at this particular juncture really doesn't have sales to boast. It doesn't have revenues to boast. And of course, therein with those statistics of, a, of an early inception company do not have profits to boast either. But at its core, this company is looking to put all the right innovation in all the right places in class eight trucking. And I believe based on the validation that we've received over monitoring this company over the last, let's just say two years of public markets, we have been provided with in incredible progress with the company.
Okay. Now, the tone and tenor that I speak of in the Discord group from yesterday, that was kind of cool, actually. Um, I really have a lot of respect for for people, whether or not they're on one side of the house or not. It th- doesn't even matter if you're if you're angry um, at the at the uh, the current situation. No problem. I'm not going to come on and you know jump up and down and 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 get all fired up just because I'm I'm not I'm not that way. Um, sure, I could look at the current situation and say, okay, I'm disappointed. But I want to draw a distinction between perhaps maybe the lens of how I draw my um, disappointment in the current situation and perhaps maybe what I felt yesterday as a little bit of capitulation, a little, little bit of exacerbated snowballing within the Discord group. And I'm not going to sit here and judge. Um, I think it was actually great for some of the people to actually be showing a little bit of emotion with regard to the story. My problem is the source of that, of that, of that negative energy. Okay. The stock price hit an, another all-time low yesterday, and it's my presumption that that hitting of an all-time low um, spurred off um, this conversation, only to be tipped on its ear with a tweet that came out that uh, on some new hybrid installs from a, from a dairy manufacturer which in, in all actuality is just another customer to throw on the pile here which in its core and in its essence is quite positive i just think that what got spun on its ear is the timeliness of it of the ceo uh, releasing the tweet after hours to maybe uh, per- perhaps maybe buffer uh, the stock entering into a new all-time low, and that's how it was perceived from a consensus perspective um, from the greater highly on air group uh, of us that that follow the company intimately and 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 want to understand progress as it's announced. And I, I tell you what, there's some real merit to that. There really is. But I want you to sit back for just a second, and I want you to think about a few things. Um, I felt that there was some anger and whether or not it was based on the timeliness of the tweet, stock entering into all-time low category and really just being fairly light on the horizon with regard to the transparency that Hylian is 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 looking to push out to the greater shareholder community. I've always contended that they've always been very, very conservative with their application, okay? However, if the basis for your anger (laughs) was the stock price alone, you need to, you need to back up a little bit. Okay. The stock market for you guys that have done this for a long, long time, and I don't want to patronize the group. I've done this a long, long time. And I've taken a lot of stocks into a downturn, only to see them turn back massive profits into the future. And I've owned them into a downturn. Furthermore, the amount of the holding that you have can only accelerate the downside on the potential capital that is decaying or 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 or, or coming down as the stock price actually goes down. This is part of the game, okay? And I hate to lay it out to you like that, but then again, I kind of don't because I think there's a lot of people who are probably in uncharted territory with regard to their current holdings of stock. And I'm certain that there's people out there with over 500 shares, and I'm certain that there's a vast majority of people who maybe even exacerbate these conversations along the line when the actual skin in the in the game that they have is probably under 500. Now, I'd like you to leave in the comments section below how many shares you actually have, because I'll review those comments and you'll get a reply from me if you actually pay attention to my charge to you and actually drop your share count into the comments below. See, I represent kind of the tip of the spear of the highly on air community, and I look to be a voice of reason in 
what is not an era right now of, of calm. There is volatility in the markets. There is absolutely an exacerbated sell-off in the grander stock market. I just had AMC today uh, announce their reverse stock split. See, if you were on the AMC bandwagon last year, you would have been looked at as a stock god. And all the while, good investors are looking and saying, really? Um, I haven't been to a movie for a long, long time because they don't make good movies anymore like they did back in the day. Um, and it's too expensive. Why would I do that when I can just enjoy the comforts of a movie in my home? And if I have the means, then I just build my own theater and I can entertain myself at home for pennies on the dollar that I pay to support the AMC initiative. But if I was on that bandwagon last year, along with the Tesla bandwagon and many, many others, you were looked at as 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 somehow having insight to the market. You were looked at as somehow being um, a, a voice of or an advocate for a specific company. And it's convenient to do so when the company goes up, okay? Um, you are much less likely to find somebody like myself who has the courage enough, and I don't even believe it's courage because my head is in the right space with, re with regard to why I advocate for this company specifically as closely as I do for free. It's because they have the goods. At its core, Hylion has the goods, okay? So, if your emotional state yesterday was exacerbated by the stock price hitting $2.19 or whatever, that is an improper way of reacting emotionally to a company that you at some point in the past, whether it be less than 500 shares or more than 500 shares, took an investment stake in this company. That is a an emotional reaction on false pretenses. In other words, it is not, it is not the proper attribute or the proper criteria to use to set your emotional content in motion. It is not applicable. It is not acceptable to use the stock price as a, an excuse to get emotional and start ripping into the company. You say, well, Ryan, you started ripping into the company on Twitter right as soon as you saw the news because I was, I was down in Rockefeller Center yesterday looking at the um, Christmas tree. It was pretty cool fighting for my my picture with my family, met up with some friends and actually didn't catch the tweet until later. It was fine. No big deal. I catch that news because I monitor the landscape pretty intimately. But when I saw the news, The, the, the criteria that I use to generate an emotional reaction to what I feel the company is or isn't doing <clears throat> has nothing to do with the stock. Nothing. Zero. Has nothing to do with the stock. And I really think you need to identify where it is the source of your anger or criticism comes from. Because if I were to ask you, what is your beef? You need to be able to tell me in a very, very succinct elevator pitch to me what your actual beef with this company is. Now, that right there furthers the discussion. Furthermore, if we quality check that observation about Hylion and you give me that elevator pitch about where your grievances are coming from, would you air those grievances if you were sitting alongside the CEO, Thomas Healy? Would you? It's a fair question. In other words, would you sit across from Thomas Healy and say, Thomas, I really like the Hylion story, but your stock price is at an all-time low. I'm pissed. What are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. My friends, that does not meet muster. Okay? That is not a criteria to generate your angst from. Okay? It's not. This company might go to a dollar a share. It might go to 50 cents a share. I don't know. 
the company might go out of business and then I'll lock up shop and I'll get back to talking about other things because I'll always find something to talk about on the channel. Hylion will cease to exist and the world will be better off as, as a planet because we've sifted through this young technology company and we have determined that the world is better off without Hylion than it is with it. I can live with that. No problem. A lot of people would suggest maybe that Thomas Healy, the CEO who started off at a billion dollars, if he lost everything and the shares of Hylion ended up being uh, worthless, that would be, I guess, some sweet revenge, I guess, for, for Thomas Healy, this young visionary to take this company looking to do right by the world and lower the carbon footprint for the very customers and for the very fleets that those that serve those customers that he's looking to do, right? That's the very initiative. If the company's going to cease to exist, then I guess that's just not a lofty enough aspiration from Mr. Thomas Healy to want to do right by the world want to subject the company early to public markets. Yes, I do contend. However, to subject Hylion Holdings to the rigor of a very volatile stock market in the face of supply chain issues, a global pandemic, a geopolitical conflict, and oh, by the way, a, a short seller group that would just as rather see this company fail to fatten their own wallets without any true understanding of what this company has looked to do from a core fundamental initiative, which is the very reason why you invest in the company. Okay. Now, where is it that my constructive criticism comes from? Say, Ryan, you know, you're one of the staunchest critics of, of Hylion out there. You know, how do you get off saying, I can't be mad about the stock price when you seemingly go on and you go on a Twitter rant? A lot of people don't read my Twitter feeds correctly. Um, so, and I don't want to be rude, but, but learn how to read. Learn how to read. Oh, I'm in a habit now of putting to Twitter and people take and they screenshot my Twitter and put it in the Discord group. It's funny, too, because I'm really an accessible YouTube channel creator. I'm not big. I'm small. I'm accessible. I'm not so busy that you can't just reach out to me and say, hey, Ryan, what did you mean by this? You know, you told Thomas Healy to F off. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said you can just take your plan and 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 and, and F that off because the, the very merit to my criticism of Hylion – and some might suggest that I'm off base and don't have the latitude to criticize the company, I beg to differ, is generated by the fact that this company, unfortunately, has lost integrity. Now, if I gave an elevator pitch to Thomas Healy and said, Thomas, you know, over the last couple of years, you've, you've lost integrity with me, would Thomas Healy agree or disagree with that statement? Play with me. Have some fun. He's going to sit across from me and he's going to completely disagree. How is it that somebody can have such conviction on, a, on an opinion, only take it to the, to the fact check and to the, uh, the ground true thing, true test of sitting across from the CEO and saying, I think your company has lost integrity, Thomas. And he looks across and said, I think you're dead wrong, Ryan. And here's why. Boom, 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 and boom. Do you think Thomas Healy or the, the investor crew or whatever decision that was made to release that tweet yesterday after hours was done so with malicious intent? Honestly, do you think it was an attempt to cover up what has been an absolutely horrendous year for Hylion down close to 70% year over uh, year to date? Or do you think it was something more simple than that in that the company was putting out that uh, information with the best of intentions? Now, it was earmarked November 18th, okay? Were they saving it up? Did they have what they needed for information enough to release that to the public? Did it just so happen to be ill-timed in their release? Because 
the presumption was made that it was being retained and released to the grander audience to somehow buffer the fall of the stock uh, entering into all-time low category, okay? Um, I've, I'm of the opinion that Hylion can do more in a lot of different fronts, but when I come back to my assessment about integrity, and my elevator pitch to Thomas Healy would be a hell of a lot different than, Thomas, you've lost integrity with me. And giving him an opportunity to disagree with me and say, Ryan, you're wrong. That's an unfair assessment. You know, I'm an honest and upstanding guy, yada, yada, yada. I've always taken the high road with the release of information. How can you say that we're not an integrous company, right? It's the source of most of my angst with this company, and here's why. Okay. The investor presentation that was initially uh, rolled out in 2020, had projections in there that they could not meet. They could not meet. And I'm still an investor in the company. I still believe in the company. I believe that the latter half of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 is going to offer a whole lot of padding to what we're identifying right now as very, very lean times. It doesn't feel like Hylion's ever going to get another order. It doesn't feel like they're ever going to emerge from this date. And it doesn't help to have a stock price that's stuck in the mud at all-time lows day after day after day after day. Okay? The information that was released was misleading to investors, and the disclaimer would uh, caution would-be investors not to put undue reliance on the information and that any forward uh, forecasts that are uh, put forward to investors, um, investors are charged with not putting an undue reliance in that information. Fair enough. Um, undue reliance does not mean that we have to look at every piece of information that is released by a publicly traded company and presume that it is a lie. That's not what undue reliance is, okay? Undue reliance means that at the time that the company released the information that they had the best knowledge and the best data to support releasing those statistics at the time that they released that data, okay? That's what it means. And if you put undue reliance in that said forecasting of information that is supposed to be based on data and the best information that is made available at the time of release, okay? Putting undue reliance in that means that if the data was skewed or the projections were skewed a little bit and the numbers did not come out the way that they were projected to come out to, in other words, they were lower than forecasted, hell, it could be even that they they surpassed those forecasts. It doesn't mean that it just, it, it's a wag down the line. And if they make it great, and if they fall completely short of it, that's okay too. That's not what undue reliance means. Undue reliance means that you cannot look at it as gospel. Okay. You can't. And you have to presume that the information that was put out is done so with good faith. That's why that information is submitted to the SEC during the SPAC process, all of that was submitted to the SEC for review, scrutiny, et cetera, et cetera. Probably rubber stamped for all I care, for all I know. I don't know. Um, but when you look at that document and you look at the projections that were made, it is impossible to get away from the very fact that at the time that was released, Hylion could not have and did not have the ability to put that information out in the way that they did because they did not have a product that was commercially viable at the time. And certification is what makes you commercially viable, number one. They did not have a commercially viable product. So to forecast those numbers was to presume that they would meet that certification in between the time that the data was released and the time that the uh, projections would be realized on the back end. They did not have any of that. And it was irresponsible for the company to put out projections and the thousands of units sold in 2022 
you want to really piss yourself off? Look at 2023 and tell me where those projections were. But just 2022 alone was supposed to be 6,000 and 8,100 units, respectively. Close to 14, 15,000 units, okay? In 2022, moving into 2023, I believe it's much, much more. And I could be misconstruing those numbers a little bit, but we were up into the thousands of units sold in 2022. At the time that data was projected to would-be investors and shareholders alike, it was unfair to expect that an investor would say, wow, that's really exciting news, Thomas, but it's a lie. It's a lie. You're, you're putting that down on paper and you're signing it on the bottom with highly on holdings letterhead. And you're suggesting that you can meet these numbers, but in hindsight, those numbers were just a ball faced lie because they did not have a product that was commercially viable to meet those sales expectation. Number two, they put out these expectations in the thousands when they did not have the production capability, number one, nor did they have the arrangements through memorandums of agreements or understandings or business relationships and collaborations with companies like OEMs to suggest that somehow Peterbilt was going to take them in as the younger brother and allow them to use their line to turn out thousands and thousands of units. I had a red flag when I reached out to Hiley on right after the pump at company came public. And I wrote an interesting email and actually got a reply discussing that if the chassis is turned off the line and you go bolting on the battery pack and, 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 and amending this chassis that's had its racking test and its weight test, and you're changing the distributions of those certifications when they're turned off from the actual OEM, doesn't that uh, null and void the warranty that would be backed at that point by the subsidiaries of PacAir, PacR, Peterbilt, um, and, and allow them to seek remedy if something failed with that chassis after it was certified, okay? In other words, if Hylion is going to put their system on this at the OEM line, who holds the ball if the owner-operator takes that product on and the chassis cracks a weld, okay? Who takes that on? Hylion got back to me and said, that's a very good question. We'll get back to you. Silence on the line. Never heard a word about it. Never heard a whim of response, never heard a whim of any type of acknowledgement to that. And I just would have liked to have been a fly on the wall at Hylion to understand how that very good question went into the vacuum and stayed there, okay? Because they did not have, at the time of those projections when they went out, the production capability to turn out those numbers in the thousands. They're, they weren't going to do it from the Austin facility, which is now entered into the discussion as a primary type of mission here because they've woken up to the fact that in one word, my criticism to the company that has gone unanswered, and I will continue to beat the drum on this, is the fact that I anticipate the end of 2023, entering into 2024, an opportunity to enter into the potential to realize sales, start to get the backlog knocked out, but they will be unable to do so because of the bottleneck effect at the OEM. If I could offer that elevator pitch to Thomas Healy in 20 seconds, I would sit contently and I would listen to his reasoning as to why I'm wrong. Well, Ryan, what you're not seeing is the established relationships. You're underscoring the relationship that we actually have uh, with Peterbilt to actually give us so many slots or to use the mod centers in the capacity that I've released on quarters past to kind of explain how that proof of concept needs to go through the mod centers and then accept it into Peterbilt. We have everything in line. All we have to do is allow those stars to, to align. Why does it take me sitting across from Thomas Healy directly in person to get to that end? Right now, investors have every reason to be pissed off because if they're thinking about it the way I think about it, 
Hylion has lost credibility because of their inability to put out information that is credible, reliable, and fact-based. Because of their inability to put out a document at the initial that was hugely impactful to the company, generated a lot of churn, a lot of interest, got a lot of people excited about it, and they failed to identify with that original investor presentation and investor presentation as the way that they should have as a lie. It was a ball faced lie. Now, again, it would be interesting to say, look, the investor presentation, Thomas, from May of 2020, it was a lie. What say you? It would be interesting to understand his rationale. He's provided zero clarity, which makes me think, to hell with it. We put the information out, I can deal with it. N nobody's suing us. And that's usually the response you get from a professional organization like this. If they haven't done everything on the up, fine. If you don't like it, sue us. I feel so strongly about this information that I have actually for the third time submitted my complaint to the SEC and it has nothing to do with the stock price. Okay. You want to be angry about the stock price? Go right on ahead and do that. Okay. You are exercising emotion on false pretenses because the stock price is not a good enough. It's not a good enough reason to get upset go onto the discord group and get counsel or, 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 or feel good comments to air your grievances to the discord group so that they can pad your ass and say, it'll be fine. Just buy lower, buy the dip, you know, it's not good enough. But I calmly sat last night and submitted my complaint through the SEC. I've done that now three times. And over the last two years of being a bullish share owner, I am tired of, number one, being ignored. I'm tired of being ignored. Now, that's just me. I'm just a little old me. I'm a singular shareholder and a retail shareholder at that. I'm quite certain that if I were even going to register on the ledger of priorities for highly on holdings, responding to me wouldn't even make their ledger in, in, in ways of priority. The problem is they don't respond to anybody. I've seen Silent Alert, who's probably the most vocal, and Andreas Rakowskis is probably, they're both very articulate individuals. I absolutely love it when they post to Twitter because they're absolutely, both of them, very, very sharp. They offer constructive posts in the right way. Me, I have no couth. They have all the couth in the world. Okay. They do it right. And I can't tell you how appreciative I am of their information. I'm I'm just a teammate. Does highly unappreciate it? I don't know. I've seen silent alert get one response from Thomas Healy. One out of how many posts? A hundred? Two hundred and fifty? If Silent Alert got a hold of me and said, yeah, Ryan, you were off on that number, man. I'm up close to 250 tweets. I believe him. I believe him. He's on there active every day, just like I am. I'm on active Twitter. Active. I'm on there daily. I monitor the accounts to see the churn. It's the single source of drop point for initiation of energy that is put out there by Twitter, uh, by Hylion through Twitter. And it's a great conduit for that. It's a great way to press out information to the masses. Am I ghosted? Maybe. Perhaps. D do I deserve it? Maybe. Perhaps. No problem. But what this ends up doing is it, is it generates a shareholder community that also follow Hylion, and I endorse following Hylion on Twitter to catch those pieces of information only to pose certain questions and have them fall on deaf ears. This, my friends, is the source of my angst. Now, it wasn't the source of my angst a half hour ago when I bought 500 more shares. 
I was just responding to somebody that I have 28 injects to the company, 28, and I've lost on every single one of them. That's a fairly jaded perspective when people come to me for my understanding and knowledge about fundamental stock market investing, dollar cost average being the fundamental strategy that's being played here on highly on 28 injects to the company. I've bought it all the way down. My cost average is less than $7 a share right now. The company's just north of two. What's the difference between two and seven? If you bought the company sub 10, you're probably sitting on a gold mine if this thing eventually turns into something special like we think that it will, right? It's not going to matter whether or not the stock price is at two or seven uh, or 12 for that matter. It's not going to matter. There's not enough churn or activity with the company, especially with the headwind of the stock market right now, having everything be drawn down. There's great companies right now being drawn down in the face of this volatility in the stock market, irrespective of what good things they may or may not be doing. Highly on right now is being perceived as not doing a whole lot. They're entering into the certification phase, runner testing, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that we're waiting for progress reports on. But if there's any stock that deserves to be drawn down, doesn't Hylion fit into that category? In other words, give me an elevator pitch as to why Hylion needs to go up. Oh, Ryan, it's at an all-time low. I'm pissed off and I'm going to go into Discord and I'm going to fire away and I'm just going to grow, air all my grievances in there and hope people come in there and feel sorry for me. Look, I read through the comments too, and I think a lot of you guys have really, really good criticisms. I think you guys really are coming from a genuine place. I really do. But the basis for your argument cannot be about the stock price. It cannot. It has to be about something else. And if I were to sit across from you and ask you what that something else is, I think I'd probably get a lot of blank stares. And the people who are the most vocal honestly should be those folks that have maybe over 500 shares. I don't know. Is there people out there that honestly hold less than 500 shares that are down a few thousand bucks that are going to come and bark up my tree about how shitty their life is right now because Hylion is down with the grander market? Come on. A lot of you guys, man, if I could package up some perspective and put it into an envelope and send it to you post first class mail, I would, because God dang it, you need it. You need it. The stock price is not adequate justification for losing your marbles over a company that just started to turn out revenue in 2022. That's it. Okay. Now, if you feel that strongly about your criticisms of the company, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're it, it does Thomas does Thomas Healy honestly operate on a premonition that everything is okay? His job as the CEO is to make that perception known to people that in the face of all adversity, in the face of all time low stock prices, in the face of all the criticism, in the face of all the posts and all the negatives and all of the exacerbated downtrends and all of the negative energy that's going toward this company, his job is to be that lone voice on the top of the mountain that projects that confidence no matter what. And it's that very confidence that we're chipping away at when we're challenging the lack of information, right? Highly on not being transparent enough, highly on putting information out. That SEC filing, that complaint that I made, that's real, okay? You can take that to the bank if you want. I feel 100% supported in my criticisms of the company that that initial stock presentation that they put out, that initial investor presentation was misleading. And it was misleading to the point where I call it a blatant lie. It was a blatant lie, and I think it's indefensible. I really do. I think if I had the opportunity to debate Thomas Healy, not interview him, but debate him 
that would be my criticism is to have him sit across from the investor audience that they turn a blind eye to anyway, that I feel like he and Hylion owes an explanation. Wow, Ryan, that's good. Yeah, you asshole. You're a bad person, Ryan. You're a bad Hylion advocate. No, I'm not. I love the company. My complaint to the SEC was specifically geared toward that investor presentation that misled investors and that was put through under the scrutinizing eye of the SEC through, at the time, a SPAC craze that since then has fallen on deaf ears. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's fallen on its face. Yep. Am I right in doing so? I don't know. I can do what I want. Okay. And there's going to be people who disagree with me. There's going to be people when they hear me, because I've said it now three times, sit back and they're like, whoa, man, geez, our, our fearless leader, our voice of reason is putting in an SEC uh, a complaint on Hylion and, th and that's all they hear. Ryan's angry with Hylion. No, I'm not. I'm angry at one specific uh, uh, aspect of the company in way of misleading information that they put forward to mislead investors. That that data that went into that, there's no way that that could have come from a, a, a justifiable place. And we cannot live in a society where people think that they can just put anything that they want on paper, especially, especially at this high level of scrutiny and get away with it. They shouldn't get away with it. They should have to at least explain what it is that they're doing, what they had at the time, because the narrative has just completely shifted since that in initial investor presentation came out. It's taken us three years to generate 2,000 reservations and 200 orders backed by deposits up till now. We are nowhere near any type of mass scale and commercialization. As a matter of fact, we are very much prior to that phase. And to my estimation, 12 months removed of that stage. According to that in investor presentation, it was in 2021 that we would go from the pre-stage to the post-stage of commercialization. And we're 12 months removed of that at the end of 2022. We cannot live in a society where that is allowed to happen. It is wrong. You guys can disagree with me all you want. It's a free country. I invite you to disagree with me. Disagree all you want. I'm right. I am right. Okay? Now, whether or not you want to take it to the level that I have only speaks to the fact that if I had 150 shares, I would have given up on this a long time ago. Okay? Your shares are just as important as mine. But here's the thing. If you're using money and the stock price as a rationale to be pissed off at highly on holdings, that's not going to hold water with me, okay? Being critical of a company based on aspects of the company that deserve criticism, now we can talk, okay? And instead of coming and firing away at me because I'm supposed to be the voice of reason on YouTube – uh, on high, all things highly on, okay, and not thinking for a second as to why I did what I did, okay, is an escape from thinking. They need to be criticized. And there's going to be people to suggest, Ryan, that's really off base. It's a young company. They deserve all the leash in the world. No, they don't. No, they don't. They absolutely do not. No way. Not in the markets that I want to participate in. I've been around the markets a long, long time, and I full well know that they're imperfect. And I also full well understand that when the tides shift, profits will be made from that imperfect aspect of the stock market. So it goes both ways, okay? Now, if I was going to sit across from a YouTube audience and profess that my complaint is going to go anywhere other than fall on deaf ears, I would be completely completely and incredibly naive to the fact that that complaint is going to go nowhere. It is going to go nowhere. Did it need to be done? Yes, it did. And I already did it. I've already done three on the company. 
Okay. The first one I got a response from the SEC on, and I will not disclose the particulars of that response from the SEC. The latter two, I just submitted the third. We will see if I get a response to that because that investor presentation, the original one that was as misleading as it was, needs to be scrutinized and they need to be held accountable for putting that information and, and misleading investors who put a lot of faith into that document, understanding that it was something other than what it should have been taken for. And that is a ball faced lie. Okay. Now that's done. With regard to the share purchase that I just made, 500 shares, it is what I would consider over the last two uh, years, a scatter plot of buy points into the company. It's dollar cost averaging at its best, okay? I like to consider it strategic buying because I like to look and monitor the share price and buy when I want to buy. In other words, true dollar cost averaging is done on a set date and you put it on autopilot and you let it go indefinitely. I dollar cost average my 401k, which is the thrift savings plan. I dollar cost average a lot of things. My bond portfolio, which I'm kind of heavily buying right now, and my dividend growth portfolio. Those are set on true dollar cost average schedules. That money comes out of the account. Half of the time, I don't even know it comes out. It goes into the account. That's dollar cost averaging. But what's the difference between the strategy that I'm deploying on Hylion to buy highly on now at these recessed prices. And it's all time low, Ryan, say it for what it is. These are recessed stock prices, you freaking elementary moronic idiots. This is a recessed stock. That's all it is, okay? It doesn't mean that your dick is small, okay? Just calm down. It's a recessed stock price, okay? In what I would consider to be a very, very tough year in 2022, it's a recessed stock price. And if you believe in the company, the further that it goes down, the more you should buy. Being able to pick the bottom in this company, good luck doing so. You will not be able to do that. So if you're trying and you're pissed off because you got caught in that euphoria a month ago when the stock was above $3, $4 just a couple months ago, and everybody was like, oh, I bought the stock at $4 and 18 cents. I'm awesome. Or, or like even as early as this week, the stock fell to $2.38 and there was everybody posting in the Yahoo feed. I bought it 238. Like you're some sort of stock God. Those are futile. Get over yourself. It's idiotic, moronic investing 101. If that to actually think that people give two shits about where you bought the stock. It is a recessed stock price. Take it for what it is. If you think the company's going out of business, so be it. It'll go out of business. We can all be happy and celebrate. And I'll go to Vegas anyway and drink watermelon martinis because we like to look at successful people and we want to wish ill will on them, like Thomas Healy, who went from a billionaire to nothing. What a story that would make. Highly on holdings, closes doors. Billionaire investor ends up broke because his highly on shares went to zero. Because again, the stock market and the short sellers and all the naysayers and the Yahoo thread single-handedly brought down highly on holdings to its knees and 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 took out the trash of the stock market because highly on was not going to produce any type of value to the world. Altria. Right? Better go out of business. Thomas Healy will lose everything. We'll be happy. We'll celebrate. I won't feel terrible for the guy. Do we really, are we really operating on the pretenses that this company is going to go out of business? Is that really what we're doing right now? You tell me, I'm not, you tell me, you tell me the tone and tenor yesterday was that it was time to close up shop and we need to close, slam the doors and we just need to give up on the opportunity because it ceased to exist because the stock hit an all time low. That was the reason. Ah, there was some fragments of speaking along the lines of I'm talking about with regard to credibility, right? And integrity. Credibility and integrity. When those things are compromised, man, it is very, very difficult to get those things back. So when I said, F your plan, 
for 2023, you need to focus on restoring some of the credibility with this company. So we don't have to feel like we're left out in the cold, which shareholders should never feel that way. Never. We own a piece of the company. And Thomas Healy and his investor group that are each getting paid a hundred grand of salary are doing a piss poor job. They are doing a shitty job because those cats on Twitter, Andreas and Silent Alert, Sober Trades has been more active. Myself, we do more in a day than they do in a month. You know, oh, Ryan, that's unfair. I don't give a shit. That's the truth of the matter right now. All right. And they need to wake up and they need to smell the coffee in understanding that my congratulations to them yesterday was to congratulate them on completely pulverizing investor sentiment at this point. It's gone. It's lost. If the tone and tenor, if I could take it and I could package it up and put it into a box and put a bow on it, I would send it to Thomas Healy and he could open it up and he could look and say, yep, it's broken sentiment, Ryan. Thank you very much. I got the message. I'm not going to be so naive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sentiment is broke. And it wasn't until yesterday where I usually like to go into the Discord group and when I'm coming up with batches of criticism on the company, I like to see a little bit more of a, yeah, okay, it's extracurricular. This is extracurricular. This is extracurricular. But the core of the thesis, the core of this message, if we emerge from this dark period in this company's history, and I will refer to this as the ice age, the dark period, the, the, the firestorm from the heavens, Valhalla as being the shittiest time in this company's evolution, we are in it. We are in the thick of things right now, my friends. Us doing the waltz, holding hands right now as the ship is going down on Hylion Holdings. This is the dark period for the company right here and there. Make no mistake, we are in it. But if you can calmly acknowledge that and suggest ways that you feel aggrieved, which I've already done so on a personal basis, okay? I've already done that. It doesn't change my stock ownership in the company. I'm not going anywhere, and I'm not going anywhere for a long, long time. Why? Because my core thesis on this company is absolutely 100% intact, minus a couple of deltas that are still open-ended, yet to be discussed, I don't know what that was a month ago when the solicitation came through to Twitter to ask questions about wanting to get answered. A bunch of people went on there and put a bunch of really good information. There was one individual as well who posted a lot of questions in that Twitter feed, kind of like I did. And I was happy to see that because that's the type of churn and interest we need to put toward those types of initiatives. Now to fall on deaf ears and not get any reciprocation from that that's problematic. I'm sorry, guys. That is problematic from a publicly traded company who wants to be more active on social media. Either be active or don't be active at all, but don't control the dialogue in a way that allows you to come on and place these churn generating types of things and zero follow through, zero. It causes more damage than it does positive. If your intention is to come on and provide more transparency through social media, have some follow through, okay? Have some follow through. Like I've said many, many times, man, I would gift the independent investor channel to Hylion. They can call it Hylion Vision. I've said it many times. I mean it. They can have it. They can have it. It's yours. You can have it. It's yours. You can have the channel. I've been busting my ass for six years on this channel. And I don't deserve zero reciprocation. I don't deserve it, okay? At least an acknowledgement. Give a yep that you understand straight from real Thomas Healy. That's the thing is they're not from him. They're not. And a lot of people are left on the Twitter feed to banter back and forth and say, see, I don't. he doesn't care. There might be some truth to that. If you don't care enough to respond to the people that you're soliciting for feedback, then don't solicit the feedback in the first place, Okay. But we come back to the core thesis of Hylion, okay? Hylion is looking to change the class eight space in all the right places, okay? Are they conceptual? No. Are they making deliveries in the class eight space? Yes. 
Is the feedback positive? Yes. Is the CEO competent enough to lead us into the next generation? 100%. Okay. Stop with this whole, like, we need to fire Thomas Healy and somehow that's going to be better for Hyleon. Do you truly believe that? Do you truly believe that? If you do, me and you are going to severely disagree. Okay. This guy, yes, he's an engineering background, but there's a lot of CEOs out there that get the nod that are pieces of shit. Okay. Thomas Healy's a good guy. Okay. And I would sit across from the guy and be like, I, I truly believe you're a good guy. You represent a company where integrity and credibility have been shaken based on previous releases to the investor populace. That's fair. Okay. But when you want to suggest to me that you think Thomas Healy should step down or he should get fired <laughs> this earlier on in the story, no kidding. Remember my plotter, my, my, my plotter point over the last two years, I've caught 28 buy injects to the company. I'm sitting on about a, a cost average of less than $7 to the company. I'm fine with regard to my finances and my personal stock ownership in the company. And the dollar amount that I have committed to highly on at this point, perfect piece of cake. When, when you look at those two aspects, very, very easy. That's why people, when they want to tweet me, they're like, how many shares do you own, Ryan? How much money do you have in the company? Or how much have you lost in the company? Those just are what they are. Those just are what they are. But this conversation that is surrounding the core, I think, unfortunately, misses the mark when we look to discuss the core and discuss where it is this company is looking to grow and evolve to in the future. Are we going to enter into an ice age next winter, 2023? What are the over and under odds of having the same amount of exacerbated downturn or downdraft that we've had in 2022 in 2023 with the odds that a down market never follow, very rarely ever follow another year of down markets, okay? Are we going to be in the same camp next year in 2023? Guys, mark my word. The stock market has a funny way of humbling people. And this is setting up to be the turnaround of a lifetime, okay? Because one of two things are going to happen, and I've already drawn the parameters between those two options. Option A, company dissolves away. Thomas Healy goes broke. He forecloses on his house. Um, his wife or his girlfriend or whatever the heck he has leaves him. And the Discord group shuts its door and 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 dissolves away because Hylion doesn't exist anymore and the company goes away that's option a okay um which there's some schools of thought that believe that this company is inevitably going there okay option a is it going to happen i don't know i don't know or option b this company follows through and it realizes with the progress that's being made and the relationships that's been made and the products and the commitments that have been made to fulfill on orders and acknowledge that perhaps maybe the 2000, maybe none of them get filled. But we know pretty, pretty certainly that those 200 that are backed by deposits are going to be filled. Okay. They're not filled yet. Not filled yet. Is that going to have a positive catalyst? I don't know. Don't mix A and B. Okay. They're not going to fill the orders and then go tits up and go out of business. Okay. Option B, they're going to fill the orders, and that order is going to spur additional orders. Oh, come on, Ryan. You suck. You're being way too presumptuous. Okay, fair enough. Maybe they do fill those 200 orders, and that is the story of success with Hylion Holdings. Naria to find another order out there in the great landscape of the trillion-dollar business that we call the Class 8 space worldwide. Perhaps maybe option A, the odds makers would put that into a foregone conclusion category. The company's going away, going away. Ryan, there's no way that option B is even a foregone. It's not even a possibility at this point. The stock just hit an all-time low, Ryan. Aren't you paying attention? I look at a dollar cost average uh, program that I've injected to the company to build up the position that I've built up over the last months and even into years 
for the setup of what is going to transpire over the next coming years. And the question you need to ask yourself, my friends, as we close down a terrible year of 2022, I'm glad to see it go down 20%. Not a good year. Not a good year to be an investor. Um, I fought tooth and nail to stay in the pocket where most people would have just rolled over and just said, yeah, sure, I'm done throwing the towel. I don't, I don't, I don't play like that. All right. Sometimes it's time to soldier up. Okay. When it's time to soldier up, that's the test of the the true integrity of an individual. Okay. And I think Hylion's going to soldier up. I think the companies are going to get it. I think the core thesis of this story is going to evolve and it's going to manifest itself. I think it's going to grow. I think the demand over companies and very few companies, I might add, that have the solution on this forefront on the carbon, uh, lowering carbon emissions footprint and doing well for the environment. I think there is tailwind that is going to be let loose once the stock market gets done and their focus is off of inflation and interest rates and it turns to okay, let's let the dust settle and let's just see where we are. See, I'm looking at a Dow right now at 32,000 and an S&P at 3,800. And my interpretation in 2022 is that this market is resilient. It's resilient. And I'm super glad that we tore the Band-Aid off and that we've raised interest rates. And when the dust settles, my friends, that is going to be that very moment when people look at the dark period like this, where very few people are willing to look at the dark period and say, yep, I was with you, Ryan. I soldiered up, okay? I soldiered up and I put the focus where it needs to be. And that is to ask yourself the rhetorical question, are we gonna end up better in 2023 than we did in 2022? Guys, only time will tell. I'm not a fortune teller and I'll go so far as to tell you that I don't even believe in that crap. And for you guys that have been wondering over the last, I don't know, few decades of your lifetime, ghosts don't exist either. Sorry to bust your bubble. I really appreciate you tuning in to the Highly on videos. We'll continue to push out the product into 2023. Mark my word, there is going to be times where this takes on some catalyst and the momentum is going to shift and it's going to be my job to coach you through and mentor you through and shepherd you guys through those times where... If you've gone through this and, and, and kind of fortified, fortified yourself in this fire, nothing, and I mean nothing, is going to knock you off of what you're going to need to hold true on this story when it finally flips the script, guys. Leave your share counts in the bottom of the video, guys. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you like the message, man, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. I speak my voice. I speak my word, I speak from the heart, and I do not script a thing. In a world where we have way, way too much scripting, it's got to be refreshing for a guy to come on and speak from the heart with the emotion that I do as we close down 2022. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message, and good luck in your investment future.